What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on SAT Math from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today I'm so excited because we're finally going to be going over the March 2021 SAT, which was released. And the reason why it took me a while to actually shoot this video and release it is because I want to make absolutely certain that it was officially released. I was just waiting to confirm that, looking at it at a bunch of different places on Reddit. And so it is a, the QAS has been released, so it's all good for me to do this test. And I can't wait. So as per usual, usual, we are going to set the timer at 25 minutes. I'm going to take it for the first time in real time, even though I'm not live streaming right now, but I'm just now pre-recording and then uploading the video, but it's going to be the same feel, same, same exact uh, deal. And I'm going to set the timer at 25 minutes. This is the no calculator section, which is my favorite section. And we are going to start in three, two, one. Let's do it. All right. Oops, too thick. Let's go and a little less thick. All right, that looks good. Here we go. The function is defined by negative one fourth x minus two, which is the graph. All right, so we got a negative slope of negative one fourth and a y-intercept to negative two. It's a positive slope that's out, positive slope that's out. We need negative one fourth for the slope and negative two for the y-intercept. That's negative, but that's a negative four slope, and this is the winner. So I'm going to show you why we go negative one fourth that's down one to the right by four down one to the right by four and there's that good y intercept to negative two done numero dos what is the positive solution to the given equations all right so again i'm going to subtract 91 from both sides right i mean maybe i'm gonna make this a little thinner oops there we go subtract 91 from both sides boom and we get x squared minus 81 equals zero and guess what this is a difference of squares you probably do this mentally but it is a difference of squares x minus 9 x plus 9 <clears throat> gives me that so my two solutions are 9 and negative 9 but the positive solution is 9 boom done what is the value what value of x satisfies the given equation distribute x plus 7 equals 3x minus 9. Subtract x from both sides, and we get 2x minus 9 equals 7. Add 9 to both sides, 2x equals 16. Divide by 2x equals 8. Boom, done. Now we're going to plug in and make sure 8 plus 7 is 15. 8 minus 3 is 5 times 3 is 15. 15 equals 15. We have verified. Number 4, a line in the xy plane is a slope of 1 and passes through 0 0.02, what is the equation? All right, first of all, they, they kind of gave us a bonus here because this is the y-intercept, so that's kind of nice. If it has a slope, we can go straight to slope-intercept form. y equals the slope, which is 1, times x plus the y-intercept, which happens to be 2. We could have used point slope if we needed to, but we didn't because they gave us the y-intercept. So we don't even need the 1 there. It could be y equals x plus 2. Boom, done. Uh, see, this has the wrong slope of 2. That has a slope of 1 half. These have a slope of 1 but um, only this one, if you plug in zero, you get two. Number five, from 1990 to 2001, German currency included coins called Fennigs, I guess, worth one Fennig each. What? Oh, got it. And Groschen worth 10 Fennigs each. Which of the equation represents the number of Fennig coins and Groschen coins, G, that have a combined value of 85? So I'm going to think about this before I even look at the answers. Like, for example... If a groschen is 10, I would say 8 groschen and 5 pennings, right? So if I have 8 of those and 5 of those, I get 85, right? Or I could have, uh, wait a minute. Okay, now let me think about this for a second. Have a combined value. So 10 groschigs, that would be too much. This would not work because pennings. This would not work because this is one and one. That would be 11 pennings. This would be, this is strange. Wait a minute. 10 would, 10 would be 101. This would be 20. So hold on. My logic, none of this is actually making sense. Hold on, let me think about this for a second. For German currency, from 1990, German currency included worth 10 pennings each. Which equation represents the number of Fennec coins, P, Russian coins that have a combined value of. So it would be 85. So again, 8 and 5. But there's nothing with 8 and 5. And that would be Russian coins. Let me make sure this is right. One Fennec each Russian with 10 Fennec coins. 
the number. Oh, I get what they're saying. I get what they're saying. Okay, back it up, back it up. This, it's it's this one because this represents, it's, I had it backwards. This represents a way to solve it by plugging in the value, right? Like for example, this works because I could plug in eight here and five here for P and I would get my, what I'm supposed to get. Or I could plug in like four for G and 45 for P and it would work. This is the right equation. This, because what it's doing is it's saying that the P is worth one penny. That's why there's a one coefficient invisible, but, and then the G is worth 10. So there's a 10 coefficient. Uh, this wouldn't work. This would, this is backwards. And then this is totally wrong. Okay. Now I get it. Six. That, that one stumped me for a reason. All right. If X greater than zero, which is the is equivalent. Okay. So we can kind of dismiss that. That just means, Hey, we're not going to have something divided by zero. So I'm going to get common denominators. I'm going to multiply this one by two and by two, and I get two over two X plus one over two X, which combined. Oh, sorry. And then we add the denominators and I get three over two X, boom, done. And we're gonna verify real quick, pretend X is two, so it's one half plus one fourth, which is basically three fourths. And if I plug in two for X, I get three fourths, it works. Seven, the graph of the X, Y plane of the equation above is a circle, what are the coordinates of the center? All right, we must complete the square, X squared minus 10 X, add the half of this squared, which is 25, plus y squared plus 6y, add half of 6 squared, which is 3 squared, which is 9, equals 2. But then if I add 25 and add 9, I must add 25 and add 9 to this side. Now, now we can factor these because we have intentionally completed the square. So this one is going to be x minus 5 squared. It works out nicely, and you can verify that, verify that if you want, and this one becomes y plus three squared. And on the right side, not that it matters because we only want the center, but the right side would be 36. Okay. So that means it has a radius of six, but the center is the opposite of that and the opposite of that, which is that. All right. Number eight. When graphing the XY plane, what point XY is a solution to the given system of equalities? Got it. Uh, here I'm going to plug and chug whenever they do system inequalities. One, one. So if I plug in one, one is not greater than four out. Negative two is not great. Negative two is greater than negative eight. Negative two is less than positive two. This works. Three, so negative three is not greater than 12. If I plug in negative three for Y out. And then if I plug in four, four is greater than negative 16. However, four is not less than, ne than positive four because if I plug in negative four here, it becomes positive four. Four is not less than four. They're equal. All right. Number nine, equation H equals 150 plus 10T gives the total amount of housing units in the community T months. So this is time that's housing units after a new zoning level pass. How many housing units are added to the community each month? Hold on. How many? T, T months. 10. No, wait. Hold on. 150 gives the total amount of housing. So at time zero, there's 150. At time, at and one month, there's 160. At two months, there's 170. Each month after it's, it's 10. It's the slope. That's it. I'm just making sure I'm not misreading it. Each month, T is equal to. Yeah, I'm not missing anything, so we're good. Numero 10, which expression is equivalent to this? Distribute, distribute, distribute. 2x squared plus 3x. In the first one, there's nothing in front of it, so it just disappears. And then I'm going to stack them up similarly. That becomes a negative 5x squared. That becomes a positive x. That becomes a positive 7. Now combine like terms. 2x squared plus negative 5x squared is negative 3x squared. Goodbye, goodbye, because they don't have the negative 3x squared. 3x plus x is 4x. You're out. And then just for fun, 7 plus negative 2 is 5, and we're good to go. 11. The graph in the xy plane of the equation above contains point AB. If A is between negative one and one, all right, which the following is not a possible value of B. Hmm. Well, what happens if I plug in zero? Wait, what's, what is this really asking? It's saying between these two zeros. Hold on. Negative one to negative two. It can be negative two. I know that because if I plug zero in, I get negative one times one, which is negative one times two, which is negative two. So it definitely can be negative two. My guess is it can't be one. 
Um, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Normally, you don't have to do this on, on the SAT usually, so there's probably a workaround, but I'm just going to go with my instinct. So there's a 0 at negative 1. There's a 0 at 1. Oh, sorry. Let's back this up. There's a 0 at negative 2, negative 1, and 1, right? If you remember the sign chart from Algebra 2. And then in between, so we see that to the left of negative 2, meaning like negative 3, it's negative, 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 which is negative. In here, it's probably going to be positive, but negative 2, negative 1.5 would make that negative, negative, positive. That's a positive. Over here, it's ne so zero, as we already showed, it's going to give us a negative value. And over here, it's going to be positive, but you can try and plug in like two, 2 or something, and it'll be positive. So I know that all the values between negative 1 and 1 have to be negative. So... Um, but, oh, but it says greater than or equal to negative one, less than or equal to one. So immediately, um, immediately if I plug in one, it zeroes out. So zero is feasible. There's no way I'm going to get a, there's no way I'm going to get a positive. So this is, the, this is the odd man out. All right. Number 12, two beach balls are in each shape of a, each in the shape of a sphere. Okay. The larger beach ball has a diameter of three diameter of 3x. The smaller beach ball has a diameter of x. I know that 4 thirds, this is on the test, but 4 thirds pi r cubed, I believe is the volume formula for a sphere. Okay, what is the ratio of the volume of the larger beach ball to the volume of the smaller beach ball? We can take a shortcut here, by the way, okay? So for whenever we're trying to take the ratio of volume and we have a length measurement, I can literally cube this which is 27x cubed. And then I can cube that one, which is just x cubed. Obviously, the x's are cancel out, and it's 27 to 1. That's a shortcut. You're not comfortable with that, okay? You can, you can actually plug it in and calculate it in terms of x and then compare, which I'll do since I think I have the time. So this one becomes 4 thirds pi x cubed. This one becomes, oh, sorry, not x cubed. It's half of, uh, sorry, the radius is x, so it's half x cubed, which becomes um, 1 eighth cubed, which is 4 over 8, 1 over two, uh, 2, so 1 sixth pi x cubed, right? And then this one becomes, so 3 halves x cubed, hold on, this whole thing is cubed, that becomes 27 over 8 x cubed times 4 thirds pi, and then this cancels out to 9 Oh, wait, let's not do that, actually. Let's keep it consistent. It'll be easier. That goes to 1. That goes to 2. And then that becomes, even though I can reduce it, 27 pi x cubed. And you see, you can already see it's a 1 to 27 ratio. But that's the hard way. Uh, but, but fine, fine way. What does the graph of the equation this look like? All right, first of all, this is exponential. Are there any? They're all exponential. So when x is 0, it should be going through 2, right? Plug in 0. 3 to the 0th power is 1 times 2 is 2. So you're out. Wrong y-intercept you're out. Okay. And let's see if we can get any other critical points. If I plug in one, so one, three to the first power is three times two is six. So that hits the mark. This one does not. You see that? Because it should be six there and it's wrong. Plug in some other values just for fun. Uh, let's circle that, but maybe like negative one would be, no, that's too hard. Um, there's no other good critical points. So I think that's it. Zero, um, negative two would be two ninths. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but probably right. Okay, the 14, let me see here. All right, the graph of the function f is shown, which of the following is a value of x for which f of x equals zero. Um, so where the function equals zero, so one, two, and three is a, is a value of x for which f, I mean, that's it, simple. So negative two or one. Oh, snap, we got this guy. Because when they say where the function value equals zero, it's where the y value equals zero, one and done. The function at of blah, blah, blah models, the number of hyacinths in a population over time, where a is the number of water hyacinths, of water hyacinths, and t is the time in days since the population was first measured, which is the best interpretation in this context. Okay, 
So this, I can tell you right away, all right? When T hits six, that's gonna be the, the first power, and it's two to the first power, be 24. When T hit, hits 12, it's gonna be 12 over six, which is two, then it's gonna be four, 48. Notice it's doubling, right? So when T equals six, this is 24. When T equals 12, it's going up in multiples of six, then it's gonna be 12 over six, which is two, four, then it's 48. 18, it's gonna be three, eight, 96. So you notice it's doubling every six days. That's my interpretation without even looking at the answers, which I like to do first. The number of water hyacinths doubled T times. What? Yeah. Number of water hyacinths increased by two every two days. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly what we predicted. All right. We got 10 minutes left for the final five. It's a great place to be time wise. The given equation can be rewritten as blah, 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 where A and B are constants. What's the value of A? So what did they do? They isolated T is all they did. So it equals add 8D to both sides. And then they divided by 4. T equals 2D plus 3H. So A is 2 and B is 3. But we don't care about that. They just want A. Boom, done. 17. In the figure shown, BC is parallel to AD. Mark it as such. And AB equals CD. AB equals CD. So it's an isosceles trapezoid. What is the perimeter of quadrilateral A, B, C, D? Got it. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what we can figure out here. I'll draw in this line over here. That's a right triangle. And this line over here, that's a right triangle. And since this is 10, 16, 8. This length is 8, and this length is 8. Because 8 plus 8 plus 10 is this whole 26, because 26 represented that entire length, right? All right, great. And then this is a 6. Guess what? Lo and behold, we have a 3, 4, 5, or a 6, 8, 10 right triangle. So now I know this diagonal part, which I didn't know before. Now if we want the perimeter, it's 10 on top, 10 on the side, 10 on the side, and 26 for the win, which is 56. Boom, done. Number 18, x squared minus 2x minus 1. The equation above the solutions, x, dun, 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 n minus k, okay, n and k are positive integers, what is the value of n plus k? Let me think about this for a second. Okay, we, we want now. This is a weird one. So I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. Sorry, my phone is vibrating. Okay. We need to use the quadratic formula. So it's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, which is negative 1 over 2A, which is 2. So it's 2 plus or minus. And that's 4. That becomes a positive because the negatives cancel out. 4 plus 4 is 8. Simplify that. Radical is 2 root 2 over 2. Divide everything by 2, and I get 1 plus or minus root two. And this is the solution, right? One plus root two, one minus root two. What's the value of one? And that's one, n, that's k. One plus two is three. Boom, done. Number 19. If x, y is the solution to the given system of equations, what is the value of x? So we're going to solve the system using good old-fashioned elimination. And since we want to solve for x, let's get rid of the y. So I'm going to multiply the top by 7. And I get 28x plus 7y equals 49. On the bottom, I get 2x minus 7y equals 1. Those guys get killed. 28x plus 2x is 30x equals 50. For example, and then we divide by 30, divide by 30. And I get x equals 50 over 3 or 50 over 30 or 5 over 3. Oh, this is going to be not so fun to check. We probably should since we have the time. So this becomes 20 thirds plus y equals 7. <clears throat> so y would have to be 1 third. Because if y is 1 third, 1 third plus 20 thirds is 21 thirds, which is 7. Now let's double check here. That becomes 10 thirds minus 7 times 1 third is 7 thirds. That indeed does equal 3 thirds or 1. So we're good. All right, six minutes for the final question. We are good to go. In the given equation, k is a constant. The equation has no solution. What is the value of k? So this is the key. The equation has no solution. So what we can do is this. I'm going to multiply everything by 2, first of all, because I just don't want to deal with the fraction. And I can do that. So it's x plus 10 equals 2kx plus 14. Now, 
What's going to happen here is these two guys are, are off, right? And that's exactly what we want for no solution. But we need these two to be off and these two to be equivalent, which means K is one half. Now, why is that? Because if K is one half, I got X plus 10 equals X plus 14. When is it ever possible that you can have a number plus 10 equal that same number plus 14? They're always going to be off by four. That's the point. So K has to be one half to make this a no solution situation. All right. We're going to stop the timer and we are going to check the answers. I have to say, by the way, if you want my humble opinion, even before I check the answers, this was probably one of the hardest no calculators I've seen in a while. There's definitely some, some interesting stuff that they threw on here. And we'll see how I did. Got the answers queued up here. Oh, this has them. It doesn't show them all. Hold on. Why can't I see? Did it get cut off? Hold on a second. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let's see if I download it. And then I open it like this. There we go. Now I can see the bottom. All right, let's do it. All right, so first number one, so we got D, A, B, C. D, let's make that thicker. D, A, B, C, the number five, we've got B, C, C, B. <clears throat> B, C, C, B, excellent. Then we got nine is A, D, 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 A, D, 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 13, we've got A, C, B, A, good, so far, multiple choice, we're in the clear, that is amazing, all right, 16, we got two, correct, we got 56, excellent, three, excellent, five thirds, excellent, notice they also give 1.66 or 1.67, uh, but I was like the, the mixed number. And for the win, one half. All right, there we have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And again, if you, you know, I know normally I used to do these as live streams. So right now, since it's not a live stream, if you do have questions, make sure to put the comments or the questions in the comment section below. If you did like this video, you do enjoy what I'm doing and want to see more of it, please click that like button. It, it really helps out all the metrics and everything that I try to do to, to spread the word and let people know that this test is doable. You can learn the math and you can learn the material and really perform your best. And I wish you all the best of luck in your journey in applying to whatever colleges and pursuing whatever dreams you have in in your mind and, and really reaching for your goals it's the hard work that pays off it's the people that are dedicated and devoted those are the ones that i believe continue to win out especially on this amazing platform of youtube and all these other ways that people can learn on, on their own like khan academy and so on and so forth thank you guys so much for joining and i'll see you in the next video take it easy